wrongfully terminated from job, now FBI is also involved as part of my revenge. Posted by Abel Tensor My mother ruins an anti-vaxxer Karen and her cronies first time posting to this subreddit. I decided to post after listening to a ton of r slash. Also, this story was a little too juicy not to post. There's a ton of setup for this one so bear with me. Background, the subject of this story is my mother, for the sake of this story, I'll call her Amber. She's in her late 70s and works for a women's clothing store which caters specifically to older clientele. She's been working for this particular company for some 20 years now. The manager of the store is the absolute epitome of a Karen, so let's call her Karen. Extremely entitled short-haired, chubby, cheats on her husband and a blatant backstabber. Because the store is staffed by mostly older women, cliques tend to form, it's basically high school, yes older women can be that petty, and naturally Karen has her own cronies. During periods where no one is in the store, there also tends to be a ton of gossip, important for later. The assistant manager, let's call her Jackie, is also one of Karen's lackeys and she has her headway. Up Karen's ass, if Karen does something then Jackie isn't far behind etc. Amber is a bit of a ball buster and she has zero tolerance for garbage in her personal life. Over the years she has tried to stay impartial when it comes to her work however because to her it's all about professionalism. She also has empathy which is something that seems to be in short supply with these other women. It also helps that she has been the top seller for her district for some 10 years running despite working part time. Karen and Jackie absolutely hate her for it, so much so that Karen routinely schedules her for hours which are not especially good. Despite this though, Amber still has her loyal clientele and she always comes out on top against the other sales associates in total sales almost every quarter. As expected, this naturally feeds the horrible feedback loop with Karen and Jackie. When COVID hit, the company decided to cut all commission for sales associates. The commission was one of the main reasons why Amber endured Karen and Jackie's bullshit. While she only made slightly above the state's minimum wage, with the commission, she could double or even triple that amount on good days. According to her, no other retailer in the area offers this kind of system and it's pretty unlikely that the company will reinstate it even after COVID ends. Along with the cut in wages, the store was also forced to decrease the amount of hours that they could offer to their associates. Karen took this as a way to essentially bar Amber from working at the store. While other associates were getting 8 to 10 hours a week, Amber would see maybe 6 if she was lucky and they would be during times of low customer traffic. Karen could get away with this because the district manager is also in her pocket. Along with the reduced hours and the removal of commissions, the store naturally had a mandatory mask policy for all employees and customers. Karen and her lackeys would often bitch and moan about how unnecessary this was because according to them COVID is a hoax and wearing masks makes you subservient to the government. There were a few incidents where Karen would let people without masks into the store despite the state and company mandates. Amber refused to rock the boat however, so when this would happen, she would go into the back of the store and stay as far away from these people as possible. During this period in time, a friend of the family and good friend of Amber's passed away due to complications from COVID. The funeral was set for a time when Amber was scheduled to work so she called out that day. Karen and Jackie attacked Amber and the deceased claiming that she must have caught the flu or been in bad health and that Amber was feeding into the lie, oh. How nice it must be to live such a privileged life. Not long after, a few of Store's loyal clients also passed away from COVID and still Karen and Jackie, along with their groupies, maintained their narrative in the most vindictive way possible. Every time someone died, it must have been because of bad life choices or bad health. Never was it attributed to the global pandemic that was claiming thousands of people a day according to Karen and her groupies. And always when Amber decided to go to the services or support the deceased in any way, she would hear snide remarks regarding how she was supporting a hoax, I guess sympathy is not really a thing for these people. Some of these customers were regulars who had been coming to that particular store for years and still none of the groupies would relent on these points. Recently the COVID restrictions have started to lift and many of the clientele and employees have gotten their vaccines. This includes submitting paperwork to show that you have indeed obtained a vaccine or a note from a doctor explaining why you couldn't have one. Neither Karen nor Jackie though, to them, getting the vaccine would be like pumping poison into their veins. Instead, they decided to use fake COVID white cards with their information, 
effectively forging the documents. Amber, however, has suggested multiple times that they just get the vaccines because it is something that is mandated by the company. All employees must get vaccines when they are available and given that almost all of the employees are above the age of 60 they have been eligible for the shots for months now. Recently, Amber had an emotional conversation directly with Karen where she expressed her concern for her. I just want you and your family to be safe so please get the vaccine. Karen responded with her normal snide attitude of course. A few days later, however, Karen sent a text message mentioning that she had finally got the vaccine, she didn't. Amber replied that it was great and that she was happy for her. Karen just replied with a gif of some guy throwing up the middle finger. This was the beginning of the end for Amber. The incident, during one of her shifts, Amber overheard Karen and Jackie discussing how Amber was a moron and a sheep who bought the story about how Karen had taken the vaccine. During that same shift, Amber was working with a customer in the back and some woman came into the store and stole a couple items of clothing, probably totaling out to be a hundred dollars at most. Now it's company policy that during all shifts, there always be at least two employees in the store and during this particular stretch of time, Jackie was the only other person in the store. According to the video cameras, Jackie was up in the front of the store playing with her phone when this woman came in. Normally, if someone steals items from the store, the protocol is to avoid confronting them and instead just call security after they've left the store. This is mainly to avoid lawsuits and to protect the employees should these people choose to get violent, it has happened in the past. That evening, Amber received a call from Karen telling her that she was on probation pending an investigation for allowing this woman to steal from the store. Given the company's policy regarding theft, this really made no sense. It was at this point that Amber truly decided she had had enough. Eventually this probation led to Amber's dismissal and the official reasoning was fairly vague. The revenge, one thing that I forgot to mention, a few years ago, Amber asked me to teach her how to record things on her phone and luckily we live in a single consent state. As such, Amber had recordings of these women backstabbing her and gossiping about rather scandalous things dating back for years. She had gathered quite the collection because you never know when you need to cover your own butt. Over the years Amber has gone to HR to no real avail, even with her recordings. Whether it be because they are also in the pocket of Karen or that they just don't care, remains to be seen, the HR department works directly under the district manager. Amber is also very good at keeping any paperwork and proof of these visits, including some recordings. She also recorded the call where she was fired. Amber has a ton of very loyal clients who were pretty distraught when they learned of her dismissal. One client in particular runs a column at one of the major newspapers for the nearby city, we will call her Casey. Since Amber was a part-time worker, she didn't really have much of a leg to stand on legally when it came to claiming a wrongful dismissal claim by legal means. However, that didn't mean that she didn't have any kind of recourse. She decided to attack the problem from multiple fronts. Amber compiled some of the greatest hits from her recording collection and had me email them off to the corporate offices of the company. Specifically, the CEO, CTO, and basically every member of the board of directors, I fired a couple bursts off to anyone who had any power that I could find, along with those recordings. She wrote an email about how Karen, Jackie, and their group of sheep all refused to get vaccines and had falsified their vaccine documents to pass the company standards. Casey then put Amber in touch with a columnist for the newspaper and they got copies of the recordings, the text messages and the dismissal phone call. They also did an interview which was for an article and a TV slot on the local news. Amber discussed the commission cuts, clear favoritism, lack of any intervention by HR, forged documents, company policy, the incident etc., basically anything relevant to paint these women in a terrible light. Among some of these recordings were bits of gossip that included conversations regarding Karen's various boyfriends over the years, she was married, and Amber also wrote an anonymous email to the husband that included some of these recordings. The fallout, shit hit the fan pretty fast as you can probably imagine. Karen, Jackie, the district manager and a couple of the groupies were immediately fired and put under investigation for forging documents. While forging a vaccine card isn't really something too serious, it could lead to some pretty hefty fines. There is no specific law against forging the vaccine white cards. However, because the white cards contain the government seal, 
Well, you can just imagine how illegal that might be. Let's just say the FBI has stepped in on this one. One of the recordings featured Karen admitting to using forged cards. After the article and TV slot ran on the local news, the CEO reached out to Amber to formally apologize for the behavior of HR, the district manager, Karen and Jackie. She even went so far as to offer Amber a raise but Amber declined because she found a job that actually paid a fair wage and let her work on her own time. The real bitch of it for the CEO and the board was the fact that their employees were breaking the company policy for a store that exclusively catered to older women regarding a virus that tends to kill older people. They caught some heavy public backlash for this. Karen's husband seems to have separated from her after finding out about her infidelity. Whether or not this will lead to a divorce remains to be seen. The best part for Amber, many of her clients started coming to her new store and again she's kicking ass as one of the best sales associates. Thanks for reading, I know this one was a bit long. Edit, thanks for all. The support guys, I didn't really expect this post to blow up as fast as it did. I thought I would address a couple of the concerns that people have noted in the comments section. I know parts to the story seem far-fetched but remember much of this has come through a second-hand account, though I did listen to the recordings and help my mom with some of the revenge. Yeah, my mom is in her 70s and she still works. She does it for a few reasons, she's on a fixed income, and the extra income helps, and she likes to be active and enjoys working with customers. My brother and I do give her extra income but she will only take so much because she's very prideful. She's also one of the most active people I know and have a more prolific social life than I or any of my friends slash family members does. No, I won't link the article because it would break the community guidelines. My mom's name is in there and so are a few of the people involved as well as the company itself. That said, you probably could find it on Google quickly enough, the contract my mother was under is classified as at will employment, basically this means that the employer or the employee can terminate the contract at any time for any reasons outside of the usual suspects, hate crimes, racial issues etc. We did talk with a lawyer and this particular aspect would make it difficult to fight the company and the termination since they gave such a vague reasons for the firing. My mother also just didn't want to deal with a lengthy legal battle just to get back at a few idiots. The manager had it out for my mom. From the beginning, I think it was due to their differing political and social views. My mom is a very outspoken liberal and this woman is a by-the-numbers religious conservative, even before Trump there was a lot of friction there. The way I worded things must have been vague regarding the conversations in the recordings. With single consent laws, you can record a conversation if one party is aware of the recording, in this case that party would be my mother. These women were so egotistical that they would often gossip about stuff right out on the store floor while talking with my mother as almost an aside. These recordings originally were for documenting all of the abuse that my mother endured. My mom was approached for a promotion multiple times while working for this company. She just didn't want the extra responsibility nor did she want to work full-time. Instead, they did give her raises but because the state was also raising their minimum wage for the past couple of years, these raises have become almost irrelevant. The FBI investigation is ongoing and as some have mentioned, there could be jail time involved for some of these women. While that is indeed true it's doubtful it will happen given that only Karen was recorded with saying that she was using a forgery. I should also point out that I am not sure how they obtained the forgeries or whether or not they made them themselves. One thing I should also note is that my mom never really harbored any lasting ill will against Karen or Jackie, or really any of the others, until this past year. The reason was primarily because she could see that they had some kind of humanity in there. Obviously, even the Karens of the world have shades of grey and my mom can be forgiving to a fault when it comes to people she has known for a long time. This is part of the reason why she attempted to try to reason with Karen regarding the vaccine. Though when it comes to politically charged topics, people can become very bitter, and if I had to guess, this is why Karen took all of this so far this time around. Thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and also subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell.